Good morning. Yesterday was an interesting day on the stock market. The Dow Jones Industrial Average lost almost 1,900 points. The, every single stock that makes up the Dow Average, all 30, lost ground. The S&P, NASDAQ, they all lost. Basically anywhere from 6 to 8% in a single day. I was watching a lot of the financial news networks yesterday afternoon to try to understand what in the world just happened. And it made me think about a, a story of, of a company that used to be an amazing company there on the stock market, and that was a and It stood for Atlantic Pacific Tea Company, a and Did you know that at one time, a and was the largest um, retailer in America? Obviously the largest grocery store chain in America. It had, it was started back in 1859, but really hit its stride uh, from 1915 to 1975. At that time, they had 15,709 stores. 15,709 stores spread across America, the largest retailer in the US, an incredibly successful company. But it was in the mid-70s that something started to change. They had the perfect business model for the first half of the 20th century. But as you smooth into the second half, consumers were now wanting bigger stores, not just mom and pop grocery stores somewhere in our different towns. No, we were wanting more super stores where you could come in and buy your groceries, but also buy your pet food or buy cosmetics or maybe your tires, whatever it was gonna be, they wanted bigger and bigger stores to pick up more things that they were looking for. A and P began to decline. So much so they saw in the 70s they had a real problem. And so the leaders decided to do something about it. They went and got their most productive managers and they said, we're gonna give you free reign. Go get a store, whatever store you want. You're free to do whatever you think you ought to do. They call them the gold key stores for A and B. And these managers went out and they saw what people wanted. Bigger stores, more variety. They began to do it. And the gold key stores prospered. They did well. But you know, that wasn't the answer that the leadership was looking for. And so they closed all the gold key stores. They didn't like the answer they got. They liked the model they had. And so they began trying to cut prices and it wound up providing worse service and stores became dirtier and it started on a downhill run. It was in 2015, they had to declare bankruptcy. When they closed their doors, they had left now um, 219 stores that had 15,000. They had the very answer they needed, but they didn't want to confront the realities that were there that was right in front of them and they weren't willing to change. It was during the 1970s there was another store that was coming on the scene that really was trying to figure it out and that was Kroger. And Kroger began working and they began changing and they began expanding and doing exactly the answer that A&P had, but they had the courage to change and do it different. For the next 25 years, from 1973 to 1988, Kroger outperformed the stock market 10 times. It outperformed A&P 80 times. Now Kroger began to do just amazing as it was growing and it was making all the changes that were supposed to be known. Did you know that today Kroger is the second largest retailer in the United States, second only to Walmart? No, they figured it out. They saw the answer. They were willing to make the change. I think it's kind of interesting. It was Marsha's grandpa, her mother's father, who worked for Kroger. They have some of that in their blood. To see it and be willing to change. You know, it kind of reminds me of right now all the things that are happening in our lifetime with the coronavirus that's going on, what's happening in the economy, social unrest. You know, right now you and I need to be looking at our lives and there may be some things we need to change in our personal life, in our professional life, maybe things we need to do different. 
I believe that if you and I will be praying and thinking, God will give us insight. God will give us wisdom on what we need to do different. How do we need to change and look and do it different? If we have the courage, then we can make it. You know, on staff at St. Luke's, we talk all the time about the Stockdale Paradox. It's all about Admiral Jim Stockdale when he was asked, how did he survive captivity in the prison camp in North Vietnam? And he said, one, he was always willing to confront the most brutal facts of the current reality, that he didn't know when he was going to get out, and he knew he would be tortured. And yet he also had an undying faith that he would survive and get out and turn this experience for good. We talk about what does it mean to look at the most brutal facts of the current reality and have an undying faith that you will be successful. Don't be afraid. I encourage you to go back and read Paul's letter to the Philippians, the fourth chapter. One of the most encouraging chapters in the Bible. It's there that you'll read when Paul says, even though he is in prison in Rome, I have discovered that I can do all things through Jesus Christ who strengthens me. It is God who will lead us into a future if we're not afraid. The answers we need may be right in front of us now. If we're willing to open our eyes and to look, don't be afraid. God will lead you into the future. We just may have to do things in a new way. By the way, every stock on the S&P lost yesterday as well, except one, and that was Kroger. Have a good day.